Yeah, I'm a few days late. Four days late to be exact. But um, Gotham Season 3 has finally come to an end. And I know a lot of people are sort of on the fence about uh, this show. Is it good? Is it bad? Um, not many people can decide whether they like it or not. But I personally think it's a pretty good show. I thought uh, every season improved upon itself. Season 1 was very messy and very sort of average for a TV show, but then season two really stepped it up, but it had a really stupid finale. And then season three, I feel like has remained pretty good for its whole runtime. And um, I really liked season three. I thought it was a great season. So mostly here, I want to talk about the finale, which means I will be talking major spoilers. So if you haven't seen this uh, final episode yet, or the whole of season three, because I'll be spoiling certain aspects of it, then uh, yeah, don't watch this video. But if you've seen Gotham and um, you want to talk about the finale with me, then we're right here to do that. So uh, this episode starts off with uh, quite the bang because um, from the last episode, Jim Gordon now has the Tetch virus, which we've had since the beginning of the uh, show or the season with um, the Mad Hatter, who is in Arkham, of course. So um, he sort of returns for the last few episodes. He sort of disappears for the whole season. I thought he was set up to be a really great villain and probably the best villain Gotham had had thus far. And then he just sort of disappears and it focuses on Penguin and Nigma, who becomes the Riddler in this um, season. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, Jim Gordon has the virus. He breaks out because uh, Lee, who also has the virus, has buried him underground. So he breaks out of this coffin and we see Jim Gordon's true self come out. Something bad happens to Jim Gordon at the end of every season. I mean, he was a baldy clone who went around um, and got accused of, you know, murdering. And now he's got the Tetch virus and he'll probably again get that, except he doesn't really this time. So at least Jim has a little bit of a break, right? Except not really. But, um... Yeah, so he has the Tetch virus, and um, they're trying to stop the Tetch virus from being spread towards the whole of Gotham, which is pretty much any Batman film or TV show <laughs> with uh, different viruses or bombs or whatever. You know, it, it's the basic Batman story, except without Batman, or is it? So yeah, um... Fish Mooney also returns in a season, which was completely pointless. Literally any character could have took her role. I mean, he could have given what she done to Butch, maybe, and it wouldn't have mattered because she really doesn't do much. I mean, she has these magic powers at the beginning of the season, which really don't make sense. Like, she can read minds or she can control people with her mind or whatever when she touches them. I never really thought she was a great character. I mean, season one, I sort of thought was fine because she was this sort of gangster type and it was like okay this is a mobster story this story is about mobsters and police officers and i can see that working but then turning her into like this super powered being and then not doing anything with it ever again and then having her return again like she's been killed so many times at this point and again she dies in this episode and it's like well she, she probably doesn't i mean a lot of characters do die in this um episode or at least about three or four do and it's like it's not got an impact anymore because anyone can be brought back from the dead. It's like, wh why would we even think that a character's dead? I mean, okay, let's get a bit ahead of ourselves. Just slightly, the beginning of the second part of the finale has um, Alfred and Bruce Wayne. And Bruce Wayne has been training under the Court of Owls, which was really nice to see. But it sort of felt like they're trying to throw in as many names and villains and organizations as they can to fans. I mean, I appreciate it. I do. I love the Court of Owls storyline. But I just feel like it maybe might have been a bit too early to do that. But the way they did it with Bruce Wayne worked. I mean, Bruce Wayne, ironically, has always been my least favorite character on Gotham. Which is weird because this is like a Batman origin. But I never really saw it as a Batman origin. I saw it more of a story about police corruption and the origin of the villains rather than Batman. And I think that was the point. But um, this season was more the origin of Batman as well. So we get to see... Batman's origins as well as other characters origins. It was good. I liked seeing that. I liked seeing them work well with each other I mean, I liked seeing the villains and Batman um, Sort of you know get born together in one like to like, you know seeing them all have their origins at the same time I liked that I thought that was a really good idea and it worked it really did So yeah, uh, Bruce Wayne's been trained on the Court of Owls and then he gets um, 
well, he goes to this, like, secret building, which it's not that much of a secret because the name's on the door and he just opened it with no locks or passwords or anything. So, uh, not too secret, but a little bit secret. So he goes to this building and he meets Ra's al Ghul, which was probably the biggest reveal of the season. It was nice to see him in this uh, episode. But yeah, Ra's al Ghul is like, okay, you need to complete your training, you need to complete your journey, kill Alfred. And Bruce Wayne doesn't really hesitate much. He just sort of stabs him through the heart. And it's like, okay, I know Bruce Wayne's under mind control, whatever. Not really mind control. He's sort of being manipulated. But it's not like he has the Tetra virus here. It's not like he would just go ahead and kill his surrogate father. Because, you know, he does it. And he feels the regret after. And you feel bad for him after. Or you feel for Alfred. You feel the emotion in the scene. But it's like, he did it so quick and so without remorse at first it's just sort of like okay i don't know if bruce wayne really would do this even if he is being manipulated so uh yeah alfred is of course brought back to life with this magic elixir or whatever it is it's never really to explain what it is it's like i don't know maybe it has something to do with the comics i can't really remember because i haven't read a batman comic for quite some time but um you know, it, it was just a bit weird seeing bruce wayne do that like straight up killing alfred without really hesitating much until after he's done it so yeah the relationship between nigma and penguin comes to a sort of halt in this episode because they've been going through it all you know as you know the penguin turns out to be gay and he's in love with nigma and then he wants to kill nigma because nigma tried to kill him because he killed nigma's yeah it, it's a lot it's a bit convoluted a lot happens with them but in this one we get a real jab of the hut moment because um you know, you got Mr. Freeze, who again was kind of pointless being introduced right now, but I guess it was all payoff for this episode. Yeah, Mr. Freeze and uh, Penguin, like, are at the end of a pier, and Penguin is about to kill Nigma, and he's like, no, I know what I'm going to do. He freezes him like Han Solo in Carbonite. He opens up the Iceberg Lounge. The centerpiece is Edward Nigma frozen in ice, and it's like, okay, so does that make Penguin Jabba the Hutt and... Uh, Mr. Freeze Boba Fett and the the Riddler Han Solo. Are we rooting for the Riddler here? Do we want him to get out? I kind of do. I like the character. But yeah, the very uh, finale of this. Obviously, the Tetch virus. Well, it stopped. Tetch is shit back to Arkham because it has to happen. Antidote happens. Lee's cured. Jim's cured. But Jim is back on the police force. And it was a nice ending. This episode had some real emotional moments. As well as the action-packed fun and ridiculousness. It had some real heartfelt moments which Gotham has been lacking. Uh, especially between Alfred and Bruce. Uh, I feel like Bruce has really improved. And I feel like in Season 4, when it comes to Bruce, I will like him a lot more than I do. So yeah, they're all cured. Uh, we get two deaths, which I feel like will not stay as deaths. I feel like they are both villain origins, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the most obvious one being Butch. Barbara shoots him point blank in the head, and it's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, Butch wasn't really that big of a character anyway, but then at the end, when he's in the hospital, we find out his name is actually Cyrus Gold. And as we know, Cyrus Gold being Solomon Grundy, the big zombie-fied badass from the Batman comics and games and everything like that. So I feel like it makes sense for Butch not to be dead if he is Solomon Grundy, because it makes sense for Solomon Grundy's origin. He's a big zombie, and it makes sense if they bring Butch back in that way. So, uh... I don't mind that. I don't mind them if they bring back Butch as Solomon Grundy because he is, of course, Solomon Grundy by that name. The next one is Barbara herself, who is killed by Tabitha for killing Butch. There's a lot of, you killed this person, so I'm going to kill you going on, or, you know, <laughs> a lot of that sort of shit going on in this season, which I don't mind so much, but there was a hell of a lot of it, and it got a bit tedious. But she pushes uh, Barbara into, like, an electric panel, gets electrocuted, and uh, a lot of people think that Barbara is Harley Quinn, and this sort of puts it there because she is insane and she obviously goes through electro uh, shock therapy from the joker which obviously tabitha's not the joke i mean she could be but tabitha's not the joker it's uh jerome who is the obvious candidate for the joker who sort of also disappears i can't really remember what happened to him he had his face cut off like that death in the family thing so um yeah uh barbara gets electrocuted and obviously we think she's dead her skin goes all pale which is like okay that has got to be in harley quinn origin because the pale skin the electro shocks i mean it's not electroshock therapy but it's electricity it's 
probably going to fry her brain. She's already insane enough. So I think we now have the origins of Harley Quinn and Solomon Grundy. So I thought they will be the forefront of season um, four. Um, the ending of season two with Fish and the clone of Bruce and everything. There isn't really any payoff for either of them. Um, and obviously we do get Selena Carl at the end of this and she is in full Catwoman gear with her whip So I think she will probably be another big centerpiece in season 4 The origin of Catwoman will probably come out a bit more clearer But yeah, overall I like this season of Gotham. It's my favorite so far I think yeah, it's still a bit flawed with some of the episodes Some of it is a bit too ridiculous But I like the fact they're taking the Batman mythos in a different direction and giving it their own spin uh, I feel like it's good. I do enjoy it, and I thought that uh, all the payoff was good for every character that we got, really. Except for the fact that we've got more deaths that aren't deaths. But other than that, I think Season 3 of Gotham is a solid season of television. If you haven't checked it out already, check it out. Um, I think Gotham gets too much hate. Um, I don't think it deserves all of that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's not a perfect show, but I damn sure enjoy it. And I will miss it. I will be, like sort of heavily anticipating the next season so there's that so yeah let me know what you thought of the gotham finale comment below thank you guys for watching and uh yeah if you like what you see make sure to subscribe so i'll see you guys in the next video